In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the new motion design tools in Maya 2016 Extension 2. The tools feature a procedural node-based workflow that allows designers to instance and combine nodes to create complex motion graphics, UI design, environment modeling, animation, and effects. So you've just seen several examples of work done using Maya's new motion graphics tools. And what we're currently viewing are the assets that we're going to be using in our presentation. We're going to use this Made Maya logo to show two very common motion graphics workflows. I previously generated this logo using Maya's Scalable Vector Graphics importer that gives us a copy-paste workflow with Adobe Illustrator. I also used Maya's text tool to generate the font on the front. So the first thing that we need to do is get a piece of geometry in our scene to begin working with. So let's go ahead and get our cube turned on and selected and create a new motion design network. So we've now instanced that object across the x-axis and we'll jump into the attribute editor to begin diving into these tools a bit more deeply. So this is a list of the motion design nodes that Maya ships with. And each one of these is a procedural building block that can be layered on top of it or combined with the other nodes inside of Maya to generate very complex effects extremely quickly. The first one that we're going to look at a bit more in depth is the distributor node. So right now you can see that we've got 10 instances down the x-axis in a linear fashion. So we could increase that number and maybe switch the distribution mode to something different, maybe something like radial. Or for this example, really what I want to do is just get a nice big grid or array of points. So we'll go down here to our grid settings and kind of space these guys out and we'll just increase the number here. And actually I want that grid to be a bit denser. So I'll just double this up to 50 times 50. So I guess that means we've got 2,500 cubes in our scene here, which is pretty cool. And you'll notice that the viewport inside of Maya is not only very high quality in its look, but it's super, super fast. And I've got all the bells and whistles turned on. This is viewport 2.0 and I've got depth of field turned on, screen-based ambient occlusion turned off. 16 samples on my anti-aliasing turned on. I've got this really nice area lights giving me this nice big broad highlight with these nice soft shadows, as well as environment fog. So not only does this give you a really fun, playful environment to work in, but the look and the quality can be used for your final output render. And for lots of the design work you may be doing, this might be exactly the look you're trying to achieve. So let's go ahead and look at how we can start to layer some more of these procedural nodes on top of this instance grid of cubes. The first one we're going to look at is a node called the Influence node. And what this one does is it gives us a locator in our scene, and that locator transforms influence the instance geometry. So as I scale this up, rotate this around, or move it through my environment, it's going to go ahead and change the objects that fall within its range of influence. So we'll kind of scale that down a little bit and maybe scale it up a little bit more. And this might be the effect that you're trying to get, you know, just this kind of pulsing wiping effect. And this is really what Viewport 2.0 is all about, right? Super high visual quality, interacting with 2,500 objects all in real time. And that's that's really, you know, what makes these motion design tools so much fun is the, the ability to iterate quickly and the playful nature that they all kind of bring to the table here. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other attributes that this influence node has. So we've got the ability to adjust its radius. You know, how, how far does that influence object fall off into those other instance pieces of geometry? We also can adjust the overall strength of that so we can turn it on and off or we could use the random slider to kind of just procedurally drop those guys off in a random fashion. So all of the procedural nodes are gonna have this notion of strength, the notion of a step, which is gonna kind of wipe through it. Every node inside of the motion design toolkit will have the same sort of strength, random strength, procedural um, stepping and things like that. So let's go ahead and scale this guy back down to make it a little bit better. And we'll jump back into that guy and I'm going to turn off the use radius. So by turning off the use radius, now my locator is affecting every one of those objects exactly the same, you know? So if I go and I start to rotate this around, all of those objects are going to be influenced by that influencer object 100%. And the reason I did that is because we want to add another node on top of our array of instance geometry here to start to use some texturing information to change the look and feel of our motion design that we've just come up with. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the mute node and we're going to mute visibility. And we're going to, this visibility is going to get muted based on texturing. And like I said before, you know, I could just use that random slider or I could step through the muting, all very, very straightforward stuff. And in this example, what we want to do is we want to texture map the strength. Now, obviously I could use a bitmap to adjust which cubes were on and which cubes were off. But where it really gets interesting is when we start to use the procedural 
texturing engines inside of Maya. And there's some really great ones, both 2D procedural texturing engines and 3D procedural texture engines. And for this example, I'm just gonna use a checker. And obviously if I start to make changes to that checker, it's going to affect the overall network that we've made here, this motion design network. And this is something that, you know, maybe I could do this in Maya before, but it wouldn't be easy and it wouldn't be real time and I wouldn't be able to iterate on it. So this is really the beauty and the power that the motion design tools bring to the table in 2016 extension two. So now that we've done something that's kind of simple and we've gone over the basics, let's do something a bit more complicated. I want to voxelize this space, this made in Maya space, and make like a trippy wavy little effect happen inside of it. So how do we do that? Well, it's really straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and get a piece of geometry to work with, again, just like we did last time. We'll create a motion design network of that object. And this time, instead of using um, a grid distribution or a radial distribution, we're gonna have it distributed based on something like the mesh. So if we just scroll down here to our mesh settings, you can see that I can just simply drag and drop an object into that input mesh. And our mesh method is set to scatter. So what's, what's that doing? Well, it's just randomly throwing those cubes around and their position is being derived from that input piece of geometry. Pretty straightforward. Now, what we wanna do is let's look at the edge type of distribution and we'll just hit the flood. So every edge now has a cube on it. And where it gets interesting is when we turn on the enable scaling. So the enable scaling is going to be a multiplier. So it's gonna take the base cube it's gonna look at how long a given edge is and it's gonna multiply that number times that base cube. So it gives you the ability to very quickly, let's just display that cube, start to build up these really cool edge effects. So we'll kind of do something like that and maybe I'll just scale this down a little bit. So I've now built a procedural outline of that Made in Maya logo based on that cube. And then of course, I could start to animate that object on and off and do all kinds of fun things with all those other procedural nodes on that outlining effect. Now this really isn't a voxelized look. This isn't what I was trying to do. Let's go ahead and switch our method over from edge to voxel. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just um, you know scale this guy, something like that. And we can hide this. We don't need to see that guy. So that's a voxelized space of the Maiden Maya logo, but it's, it's really coarse, right? So we wanna get a little bit more fidelity in that. Let's go ahead and jump over to our node and just start to drop down that voxel size. So as I start to drop that voxel size down, I start to get this really cool look. And I actually really like that look of the stripes. I've got a preset set in here, so we'll just kind of replace that guy and dial that in and let's scale this guy down. But I think that the kind of, the kind of stripey look is really fun and graphical. So now that we've done that, how do we start adding movement onto this? Well, let's look at some motion and how we can use the motion design tools to procedurally add on some really cool effects. So let's just go ahead and grab this guy here. And I'm gonna put on a noise to position, pretty straightforward. And you can see tons and tons, thousands of cubes inside of there. Hit playback, Maya's just gonna rock this out, 30 frames per second all day long, totally flying. And obviously I can iterate on this because they're all procedural. So I can just get this looking exactly how I want. I can turn down the strength effect to zero it back out. Or if I don't want them all to zero out at the same time, I could use the random strength. So same type of effect here. I could use a step to sort of step through it. Really, really cool stuff that happens with these motion design tools. So now that we've done that, you know, that's, that's all well and good, but that's not really the effect that I wanted. I wanted something that was kind of wavy or trippy. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump back over here. Let's stop our playback really quickly and grab on a trig node. So the trig node going to position is gonna give me the ability to move this with sine waves or cosines or tangents. So we play this back. It's gonna be a little crazy looking. You know, it's kind of kind of hectic there. So we can start to dial this guy down. And I've actually got a preset called wave that just sort of dials that guy in. So I think that's pretty fun looking, but they're all moving, um, you know, with a little bit of that randomness inside of there because we've got that wave layered on top of this random, right? So if I zeroed this random out, you know, turn that off, that's without the random effect. And then if I wanted to break it up a little bit, I could give it a little bit more random effect, so, you know, something sort of like that. And that's, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot, actually. So how do we further refine this? Well, we can actually use objects in our scene to enable or disable the effect. They're like influencer objects, except they're volumes. So let's go ahead and look at how we can work with that to sort of do a couple of different variations or iterations of this guy. So we're gonna create a new fall off object on this guy. And what that does for me is it gives me 
this, this fall off object, if you double click on the fall off object, you can see that you have an inner zone and an outer zone. So that's going to be full effect going to no effect. And then you have the ability to adjust it based on this ramp modifier. And these ramp modifiers are actually all over the motion design tools or they're, they're pretty much everywhere. So what that gives me is it gives me this, let's get our playback going here, just as that's playing back. If it's inside the volume, pretty straightforward, right? Let's kind of scale this volume up. It's going to get the wave effect. If it's out of the volume, it's not gonna get the wave effect, but it still has that little noise in there. So I don't really like that. I want it not to have the noise when that volume exits. So we're gonna use the same fall off object for both of those procedural nodes. So now, if we play this back, what do we get? Well, we get an object that if we pass into it, it wiggles. If we pass out, it doesn't wiggle. That's pretty cool. But when it, lose, when it leaves, it just ends abruptly. It doesn't really have any kind of cool jiggle or something like that. So I'm gonna go back to my motion design tools and add onto that a spring. So we'll just say add spring and you can adjust the dampening, stiffness, strength, you know, all the common things you would expect to be able to adjust. So now what happens is if we play this back and I wiggle this through here, you can see I get that nice little spring effect. And we'll kind of zoom in on this guy a little bit. And you know, this looks really cool with that depth of field. So you can see that that zoom effect sort of sort of happening on that guy as I, as I as I move that through there. So really really pretty fun. So let's go ahead and change this up one last time. So what I want to do now is I want to have this stuff kind of moving around all crazy. And as that object goes in there, it sort of calms it down and makes it build the Made in Maya logo. So how do you do that? Well, you just go back to your influence object and on your influence object, you just switch it to invert. So what that means is if we play this back now, everything's moving around, right? And as I start to slide the influence object into it, it turns it and it makes it assemble into that made to Maya logo. But notice what happens when I scoot it through and it escapes back out the backside. When it's not in the volume, it's not getting affected. And we can change that behavior. We have different modes for these influence objects. So they can become essentially triggers. If I put this to an add mode and hit my playback one last time, you know, get something kind of cool like that and we'll just animate this through here. As I animate that through, it does that little jiggle and notice it's outside of there, but the made in Maya logo has been, um, triggered by the effect of that influence object passing over it and it just stays. So that's just a couple of examples of the types of things you can do with the new motion design tools inside of Maya 2016. They're super fun to work with. They're procedural in nature, so it makes it extremely fast to iterate on. And they're built on top of the amazing core Maya architecture that makes for an awesome, awesome environment. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what all the designers are gonna do once they get their hands on these tools. Thanks so much for taking the time to check it out. Cheers, everyone.